Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless exodus 10 12 through 15 then the lord said to moses stretch out your hand over the land of egypt for the locusts that they may come upon the land of egypt and eat every herb of the land all that the hail has left so moses stretched out his rod over the land of egypt and the lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very severe. Previously, there had been no such locusts as they, nor shall there be such after them, for they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they ate every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. So there remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Already grappled with socio-political problems, Afghanistan has a new headache to deal with. Locusts, swarms of these animals have now estimated to have destroyed the country's annual harvest by almost a quarter. Now, the United Nations have already projected a worsening food security crisis. Dosiostorus moroccanus, commonly known as the Moroccan locust, ranked the world's most economically impactful plant pest. 150 plant species, more than 50 food crops, that's the locust's regular diet. And it now wreaks havoc in Afghanistan's already fragile agrarian economy. A full outbreak this year could mean close to 1.2 million metric tons of wheat wiped out. That's some $400 million in losses. North and northwest regions of the country are most prone and worst hit. The Moroccan locust has destroyed 60 hectares of my wheat field and 6,200 hectares of pasture land in this area where 10 villages are located. These locusts hatch from mid-March to mid-April and finish in mid-June. So dear brothers, we call on to you, please help us and find a solution in any possible way. Drought, overgrazing and limited locust control measures are held to blame. The right amount of rainfall for locust breeding in March and April made things worse. The UN Food and Agricultural Organization has sounded alarm bells. This year's outbreak is the biggest since 2015, and left untreated, the locust population could increase 100-fold by next year, creating problems beyond control. We need to pre-position to ensure that households who, 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 who could lose everything can receive the food assistance they may need, but also the agricultural support, the emergency agricultural assistance they'll need to get seeds, food back in the fields and growing. But also we need to prepare for next year because another thing about Moroccan locust, it can multiply from year to year 100 times. What we need to do is to make sure that next year we don't see a far worse outbreak. Like a lot else in Afghanistan, the locust control system too has gone rusty. Anti-locust chemical supplies run low. Traditional mechanical control methods are being pushed by the UN and agencies that remain. Sweeping locust hoppers into tarpaulins and then burying them into trenches to cut outbreak impact. Here too, that tipping point is not far. Joel 1-4 What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Joel 1-15 Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. There is no doubt that the prophet Joel was warning his readers about a future day when God would judge all people. The day of the Lord the prophet Joel is referring to is the seven-year tribulation. The world is seeing death, destruction, and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen 
or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth, who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin, will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Now to the rising tensions between the U.S. and China. The latest provocation, a near collision between American and Chinese warships. It does seem that these incidents are becoming more frequent. U.S. Defense Secretary Austin saying that we don't seek any conflict or confrontation, but nor do we flinch or uh, move away from bullying. The Chinese, however, telling the U.S. to mind its own business, warning any severe confrontation between the U.S. and China would be a, quote, unbearable disaster for the world. This morning... Increased tensions between the U.S. and China after a close call at sea. A Chinese warship intercepting a pair of U.S. and Canadian ships sailing through the Taiwan Strait. Video capturing the moment Saturday when the Chinese warship picks up speed, cutting in front of American destroyer USS Chung Hoon by just 150 yards. The ship's wake coming dangerously close to the destroyer's bow. The captain of the Canadian vessel saying the Chinese sailors called the American ship, telling them to move or there'd be a collision. The Americans asking the Chinese to stay clear of the ship, but having to suddenly slow down in order to avoid a crash. The US responding, accusing the Chinese ship of acting in an unsafe manner and violating the maritime rules of the road. China's defense minister firing back, saying the best way to avoid another close call is for all countries, especially their military aircraft and warships, to refrain from wandering around other countries' territorial waters and airspace. This incident, the latest to raise tensions. Just last week, a Chinese fighter jet coming within 400 feet of a U.S. reconnaissance plane over the South China Sea. And earlier this year, the U.S. shooting down a Chinese spy balloon flying over the U.S. But National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on CNN emphasizing the need for diplomacy between the two nations. And we believe there is nothing inevitable about some kind of conflict or cold war between the U.S. and China. Well, overnight, the State Department's most senior diplomat for East Asia landing in Beijing. This is the fourth high-level meeting between the Chinese and the U.S. in as many weeks, with CIA Director Burns secretly going to China in May. But, George, make no mistake, the tensions are very real, as is the need to avoid any real-world military clash between the two. Overseas now for the latest on the war in Ukraine. There has been new fighting around the eastern city of Bakhmut, and Russia is claiming to have repelled a large Ukrainian attack in the eastern part of the country. 
Ukrainian officials declined to comment on all of it. Deborah Pata has more now from the city of Kharkiv. This is a video released by Russia's Ministry of Defense claiming to show its troops repelling a Ukrainian advance in the eastern Donetsk region. We can't verify this, and Kyiv has consistently sent mixed signals, perhaps a military tactic in itself. The latest being this, a video released over the weekend with the tagline, Plans Love Silence. Ukrainian soldiers are seen urging operational secrecy around any talk of a major and much-anticipated counteroffensive. Across the border in Russia, a new front line has opened up. Anti-Kremlin militia fighting alongside Ukraine have stepped up attacks in the Belgorod region. The daily hardships Ukrainians have become so accustomed to now being felt by thousands of Russians who've taken refuge in a temporary shelter. We're trying to be strong, said Irina Berlakova, because we have children who give us the incentive to carry on. And it is children who were once again the center of yet another Russian missile attack in the early hours of Sunday morning, this time in the Ukrainian city of Dnipro. Rescuers working frantically overnight brought the devastating news that at least five children were injured in this attack and a two-year-old girl was killed as she slept with her mother who's fighting for her own life in hospital. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention, his return is near. Ugandan troops have served in the African Union peacekeeping mission in Somalia for 15 years. Last week, Al-Shabaab fighters attacked their base in Bula Maria in the Lower Shabela region. The Ugandan government took days to confirm the number of deaths. Al-Shabaab claimed they killed over 100 30 Ugandan peacekeepers in that incident. The Ugandan military did admit casualties, they did suffer casualties, but did not reveal the number as of until today, in which they claim 54 were killed. The Somali government has been making gains against the armed group for months. It's taken back swathes of territory and encouraged Somalis to work with the government to reveal Al-Shabaab hideouts. But it appears the armed group is still capable of launching a large-scale attack against an African Union base. Despite gaining territory from Al-Shabaab, Al-Shabaab is still able to strike targets at will, whether it be Somali government installations or foreign military bases, as you've seen with the latest incident targeting the Ugandan military base. Ugandan President Yuri Museveni says his soldiers did not perform as expected and panicked. There's also pressure at home to end the mission in Somalia. And now, after last week's raid, two senior officers are facing a court-martial to answer for one of the largest number of Ugandan deaths in a single attack in Somalia. Fighting has intensified in several areas of Khartoum after a ceasefire deal expired. This, as activists said, a new outburst of violence in the North Darfur state had left at least 40 people dead. The worsening clashes come as a temporary truce between the two warring sides ended on Saturday, with talks to extend it breaking down on Friday. Our regional correspondent, Bastien Renouille, spoke to us earlier. Well, I can tell you that the fighting were very uh, intense this weekend in Khartoum. My contacts uh, in the capital tell me that they could hear uh, gunshots and many uh, explosions. I was on the phone yesterday with a doctor who was living in uh, Khartoum North, and she said that there were more and more rapid support forces members in the street of her neighborhood. Uh, these men were trying to hide in civilian houses, trying to escape from uh, the bombardments from the Sudanese military. And she said that um, her family and many of the neighbors had to escape to uh, an area controlled by the army because the RSF are looting more and more houses, they are assaulting many civilians, they are raping women. There are more and more reports of uh, these men attacking uh, civilians in the capital as the fighting uh, continues. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, 
and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Tonight, political protests in Senegal turning into violent clashes between rioters and police, killing at least nine people and leaving the African country on edge. This chaotic scene unfolding in Dakar, protesters firing guns and police launching tear gas into crowds. Demonstrators sending buses, cars and tires on fire. The bustling capital city now shrouded in thick black smoke. Protests erupted after the country's leading opposition politician, Usman Sonko, was handed a two-year jail sentence, threatening his bid for president. Sonko was convicted of corrupting the youth, meaning he was found to have acted immorally towards someone younger than 21. But the embattled politician was acquitted on other charges of rape and making death threats to his accuser. Violent clashes forcing the government to block numerous social media sites, including Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Telegram, TikTok, WhatsApp, and YouTube, claiming these platforms were inciting violence. Sonko's residence now completely surrounded by police and protesters, as the justice minister says he could be arrested at any time. Sonko and his supporters say he's the victim of political prosecution designed to prevent him from running against the current president, Macky Sall. The government has rejected accusations that the case against Sonko is politically motivated. Senegal's army now called in to reinforce the streets, which are quieter today, but the broken glass and the burnt debris still an omnipresent reminder of the unrest. Senegal has long been considered one of Africa's strongest democracies, but Senko's trial and fears that President Saul may try and bypass the two-term presidential limit have led to months of protests culminating in one of the deadliest days of violence in the country's history. And the fear is that the violence will continue because Senko's mostly young supporters are determined and motivated. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A professor in Indianapolis attacking the Christian faith with this bulletin board on understanding Christian privilege. The display tells students, quote, Christians receive inherent advantages. Other religions are marginalized, even perceived as troubling. Jacob Stewart is a campus reform correspondent and a student at Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis, and he joins us now. Jacob, thanks for being here. You took that picture, publicized the fact that this bulletin board has been, how long was it up and what has the, the university said about it? Yeah, so thank you for having me on. So this board has been up since at least October, more than likely the whole year. Um, and, and so the university really hasn't said much about it. Um, I, I emailed multiple different people. Um, I haven't gotten many responses back. Um, so, yeah. So the point is all year long, if you're a Christian, you can realize how privileged you are. Here's some of the, the, the points that are made on the bulletin board, which you're familiar with. I want to share them with our audience. This, the bulletin board says Christians do not face systematic discrimination in the U.S., Religious diversity is not the same as Christianity being under attack. Christian privilege is directly connected to white supremacy. Christianity is too often seen as synonymous with moral goodness. And to wield Christian privilege is often to weaponize religion against non-Christians. It's staggering um, what an indictment this is of a people of faith at a university. Yeah, it was pretty uh, shocking to me as well. Um, as a Christian myself, I was I was offended by it, but but shocked. Some of the examples it used as uh, Christians having privilege was being able to worship freely or having a Bible study during a school lunch, which is pretty crazy because that's not a, a privilege; it's a constitutional right afforded to everyone, regardless of you know religious background. Institute's campus reform has reported on multiple examples in in recent uh, years of Christians being subject to ridicule and mockery on college campuses. Recently. There has been a tremendous increase in mockers and scoffers that are attacking Christianity 
and the Bible in general. On two occasions, the Bible warns that the closer the coming of the Lord Jesus, the greater the mockers and scoffers will become. 2 Peter 3, 3 and 4 Knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Jude 1, 17 and 18 But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time, who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. What is so significant in both 2 Peter 3 and Jude is, the prophets and apostles warned about mockers and scoffers. Apparently, the mockers and scoffers are a sure indicator we are living in the last days. Um, I can give you a few examples, like at Harvard, uh, there was a musical uh, depicting Judas as a gay man who falls in love with Jesus. Um, and at Dartmouth, there was a drag show um, that depicted a topless nun. And, and then at Polk State College, there was a professor that allegedly failed the student for refusing to concede that Jesus was a myth. Psalm 14.1 The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. If you tried to put up a display at the university and ask them to, that it was pro-Christianity, it wouldn't last a half hour. Yet this has been up the entire school year. It tells you everything you need to know. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Now to California tonight and to the deadly stabbing spree and carjackings, a suspect accused of killing three people, including two pedestrians that authorities say he intentionally ran over. Several others injured tonight. How this siege came to an end. Here's Matt Gutman. With stabbings, carjackings, and rammings, tonight the suspect in that violent rampage that left victims scattered across parts of California's Bay Area Thursday is in custody. We ended the crime spree. We were able to effectively prevent additional people from being injured. Police say just after 3 p.m. local time, 31-year-old Kevin Parkerana allegedly carjacked and stabbed two separate victims in quick succession. As he fled, he slammed his stolen vehicle into a third victim. All three of those injured, hospitalized. An hour later, San Jose police responding to reports of yet another non-fatal stabbing and of a vehicle intentionally running over two pedestrians at a separate location. Authorities say those two pedestrians did not survive. The suspect then fleeing to this shopping center parking lot in nearby Milpitas, where he allegedly fatally stabbed another victim before abandoning his vehicle and again fleeing, hiding this time in a nearby residential area. Roughly three hours after the deadly rampage began, police apprehending Parkerana. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. A new warning about jugging, that's when criminals follow someone from a bank or ATM hoping to rob them at another location. And Janae Norman is back here with that. Janae, this is serious and it's growing a problem. It really is, Rebecca. We're talking about a crime of opportunity that really anyone could find themselves a victim of. Criminals looking for individuals with bank bags, envelopes, or coin boxes, which could signal large amounts of money. I knew when he was on the seat exactly what he was after. 
This is the moment Texas resident Lisa Kayser became a victim of what police call bank jugging. I started screaming to get out of my car, get out of my car. Jugging is when criminals lie in wait outside banks or ATMs and follow people they believe have withdrawn large amounts of cash and rob them at their next stop. They're looking for people that are walking out with bank envelopes. My son said, Mom, I know, you know, he took the money, he took some other items, and he said, but he didn't hurt you. And so that's what matters. Kaiser is one of a number of recent victims of what police say could easily turn violent. Some of those cases recently caught on camera. Multiple states have seen a rise, including Texas and Alabama. In Oklahoma, officials telling residents to stay alert after seeing a couple of cases last month. And Ocoee, Florida, just outside Orlando, issuing a crime trend alert. Jugging in some form or fashion is very common. It goes beyond banks. People stay outside restaurants and bars into the early morning pick out vulnerable people, follow them a certain distance, and rob them. And you see how brazen they can be. Experts say vigilance, it's key. It's recommended to secure your money before you leave. Be aware of your surroundings, of course. Look for vehicles that may be backed into parking spots. Even circle the block to see if anyone's following you. And if you believe you're being followed, of course, guys, call police. Back now with a new warning about a surge in organized retail crime. Stores are losing big money, raising prices to cover it. And the greatest cost could be to the safety of workers. Retailers we talk to are losing billions of dollars to organized retail crime, and authorities are warning that this has become an absolute threat to public safety with violent gangs, dangerous international crime rings, and even groups with suspected ties to terrorism increasingly getting involved. You've seen the videos of brazen smash and grabs at many different retailers across the country, and federal authorities are now sounding the alarm about coordinated robberies like these. It's an absolute threat. It's called organized retail crime, where groups of criminals steal high value items to then sell online or elsewhere. They know exactly what stores to hit, when and where. And obviously, the profitability is the key here. Retailers say this type of crime is reaching unprecedented levels, forcing the average family to pay an estimated $500 more each year on goods. Are you seeing a dramatic rise in this type of crime? Absolutely. It's growing double digit year over year. And Homeland Security officials tell ABC News they now see violent gangs and dangerous international groups getting involved, organizations suspected of ties to drug trafficking or even terrorism financing. These criminal networks, they may be full-time drug traffickers that see an opportunity to work with a crew that's already stealing. Big box retailers like the Home Depot have been hit especially hard, investigating hundreds of cases and losing billions of dollars this past year alone. This is what we refer to our billion dollar aisles, billions and billions of dollars worth of sales in this product. And then about a third of our uh, losses from a theft and frauds perspective come from, you know, power tools. But worrying these stores even more. More, they say thieves are growing more and more violent, threatening employees with guns, knives, even a hammer. Home Depot says it's taking steps to protect its workers and fight growing organized retail crime, showing us new measures they're testing in this store outside Atlanta. Alarmed gates, increased surveillance, and locking up merchandise. How much is a school like that worth? Anywhere from $1,000 to upward of about $3,500. How much do you think one of these spools weighs? Probably clo close to 500, 800 pounds. They're rolling it out, throwing it in the back of a pickup truck or the trunk of a car and speeding away. You can see that we've had to you know, put a barrier in between the, the bad actors and the, and the product. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves, illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness has now taken over all aspects of society. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Place and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't oh, but dad me, young lady. I just said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then Jesus said I will profess unto them I never knew you este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro depart from me ye that work iniquity so robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind. <laughs> it's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad for those who are left behind. Life! Life as we know it! You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday.
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.